So, um, today we'll be talking about Nouveau and uh, a recap of what the work that has been done, what we are doing and what we are planning on doing. So today on the stage, there are, there are, I'm Martin Perez, this is Emil uh, Velikov and Martin uh, Koshenliki. Uh, we were supposed to have Martin Langhorst, so three Martins, uh, but yeah, he's not here. So, okay. So the reason for this talk is last time we discussed about the updates on Nouveau was at FOSDEM 2012. Um, we've done another one at XDC, but it's not fast them, so let's do it here too. Uh, and of course, there were many improvements since then, so yeah. And with that. So, Kepler, a new family of cards. Uh, so, after Fermi, uh, NVIDIA released Kepler. Kepler is uh, very power efficient and faster. It was released uh, in March 2012. And we actually got mod setting support on the same day. So the reason why we managed to do that is because uh, an uh, OEM actually sent a card to Ben Skeggs uh, in advance. Uh, so he had the card for 15 days to prepare for the um, same day release. And then um, there was some uh, unreleased 3D support uh, who happened, what, uh, that happened to a few days after. But as we were in the middle of rewriting the MISA driver with the new LibDRM, then it took about a month uh, in order for it to be released and accessible to everyone. So um, the rest of the talk is divided in uh, kernel, user space, and then the tools we develop. So we'll talk about the kernel. So big update, Nouveau left staging. So it's now supposed to be stable. We try to. Uh, we also uh, rewrote the uh, internal architecture of the driver. It used to be uh, Kepler code used to work, uh, not Kepler, but Fermi code used to uh, call some uh, um, code for written for the TNT2. So we had problems sometimes with regression. By fixing a, a chipset, we would just uh, trash all the others. So, um, the new core archi architecture is now separated in uh, per chipset. It's very, um, it's easier to know what are the dependencies and uh, uh, and it, it helps with the regressions, or it should help. It's uh, object oriented, so um, it really helps for keeping track of who is using the the engines, and this is going to be very interesting for power ma power management. For instance, um, cutting the power of the engines that are not used, this kind of stuff. It used to be impossible. Um, okay. Uh, next thing, Optimus uh, and Prime supports. Um, so Optimus is the technology developed by NVIDIA. Um, they use an Intel uh, GPU um, and then an NVIDIA card. So usually it's the um, Intel GPU doing the all the um, the display and the 2D acceleration and well, and 3D too. But whenever you want to uh, launch a game to get performance, then you use the NVIDIA driver. So you get a low power consumption when you are doing um, browsing and all that. And when you want a game, then you have the performance uh, that is available without the uh, power consumption hit. So the, the work for that has been added to Linux 3.9 by Dave Early. And we are still waiting on the synchronization between the drivers. So it means that if you use one driver to do the rendering and one driver to do the, um, the blitzing or sending stuff to the screen, then you'll see some tearing because the, the two drivers are not synchronized. It's not going to tear, but it's going to be choppy. Yeah. So if you want to have more information, you can have a look at the wiki, uh, the wiki page on Optimus. So power management. Thermal management uh, should be working on almost every card now. So it means temperature monitoring. Uh, there are so many ways of, there, were, there used to be so many ways to get the temperature on the card. Uh, it, it's, it's crazy. Um, especially on the uh, GeForce 7 cards where we didn't, we're not even sure that uh, it actually works well. Um, 
We had a bug, uh, uh, someone uh, complaining about the, the temperature being 3,000 degrees. So obviously it's not working well on every card. Yeah, uh, it's, no, it's not possible. <laughs> um, so on GeForce 8 and later, uh, it works for every card, except the one with uh, I2C uh, I square C, uh, only uh, temperature probes. So the reasons why we cannot get this temperature in the driver is because of the HWMON architecture, which is um, used to export or probe. That's the, dr I, uh, that's the driver for the temperature probe, but it only exposes the temperature to the user space. So the kernel space cannot use the information. We've been trying to change that for a while. When I say a while, it's several years. And um, so far, yeah, nothing has changed. We even proposed a lot of code, but yeah. Fan management. Uh, static fan, man fan management for Tesla, uh, GeForce 8 to um, Fermi, so GeForce 400. It was added in Linux 3.7, and it worked. Uh, mm? And there was a couple of glitches, but it was fixed shortly afterwards. So yeah, there were some glitches. <laughs> it was during the ASCII period, so Ob yeah, hopefully no one saw that, no end users. Uh, we added uh, experimental fan management in 3.9, and it's now enabled by default on 3.13, but it doesn't work on all Keplers. <coughs> So yeah, that's problematic. We they, they added a new way to drive a fan, and they've been very inventive in, in ways of driving the fan or reading the temperature. And there is a new way that we don't support yet, and we need to understand how it works. But I've been bashing my head on my keyboard for a while to understand that. So if you have any problem with that, terminal management, fan management, you can contact me. Um, yeah. So let's continue on power management. Reclocking. You've been hearing about this for a while. Uh, on every foreign, foreign X article about Nuvo, Michael complains about a lack of proper uh, reclocking. So for those who don't know what this is, it's changing the frequency of the, of the engines of the um, graphic cards. It means changing the voltage too, changing the memory timings, <laughs> changing everything. So this is very difficult to, um, to do, especially when you don't have a programming guide. So we do that by reverse engineering. Um, it should provide a lot of performance when you need it, and you can lower the, the clock when you don't need it, so you can save power. By default, on uh, Fermi, um, the, the clock are the, at, at the lowest, so basically a tenth of what you would get for the high performance mode. So you get a tenth of performance. <coughs> yeah, so quite a performance hit. Then uh, power and clock gating are ways to lower the power consumption without heating um, or slowing the, down the, the engine. It's very good, but we don't have support for that yet. It's mostly done by the hardware, but um, we need to set up all the registers for that, and we don't really know the, the list of registers and what we should uh, put. It seems like NVIDIA is just putting numbers and uh, there's no logic in it. So we'll try to, to use that, and if uh, users complain too much, then it means that it doesn't work, because that's the only way we can test. Um, so yeah, it should be released soon for Femi and Kepler because of um, some code that has been released for uh, the Tigra uh, K1. So they basically, uh, we now have a, have a list of the, all the registers and the value we should put. Uh, we are going to check if it's... Uh, what needs to be put for the desktop cards, and um, if it works, then, then it's good. But at least we have a register list, which is good, because I found a third of this list, only a third. And I was wondering why I didn't have the same power consumption. <laughs> okay, performance and power monitoring. Um, so uh, the big thing is that some Kepler actually have a power sensor now. So they used to have... Um, an internal hardware model of the card, and uh, with some, uh, so basically it would uh, check what part of the engine is active, and then if you assign uh, a weight on that, and you integrate and you do uh, all this stuff in hardware, you get a power consumption reading. And you get it about 500,000 uh, times per second, which is quite nice for power cupping, but we won't talk about that. 
Um, we also uh, we should uh, soon have a rough engine usage indication. So for memory, uh, graph is the graphic engine, and video. Oh yeah, the video decoding and engines. And that's going to be used for dynamic reclocking. Uh, so when we need performance, we can increase the clocks. Okay, so we'll move to the user space. Performance counters. It's a bit like uh, the uh, uh, engine usage uh, indication, but it's more, much more accurate. So we added support for MP, so multiprocessor counters. Uh, let's put it this way. It's GPGPU. Uh, well, we exposed that uh, for GPGPU. Uh, right now, it's only exposed uh, through the Gallium HUD, so it's basically graphs displayed on top of uh, applications. Um, so the Kepler support was added by Christoph Bermiller, our main um, Gallium developer. And uh, the Fermi support was added uh, by Samuel Pitoisi. Uh, he was my GSOC student this year. Uh, he also fixed the Kepler support for the other cards that Gallium didn't have. So work in progress. Um, we still have to reverse engineer all the graphics related signals. Um, unfortunately, we need Windows 7 for that. Yes, yeah, W7. <laughs> so on Windows 7, we had to port our tools to Windows 7 so as we can do the reverse engineering. Um, so it takes a lot of time, but it's still working on it, so this is good. Um, and then there are the performance monitoring for. Yeah, that, that was the uh, usage um, indicator that uh, I said uh, should arrive shortly. Okay, and I don't know why I added export the kernels. Maybe it's just a copy-paste error. Okay, um, so this was supposed to be presented by Martin, but since he's not here, I'm keeping the mic. So, uh, I talked about libdrm2, uh, the libdrm uh, rewrite, uh, when I talked about the Kepler support that took some time to actually uh, uh, reach end users. So the first thing we needed with the new uh, libdrm was to expose the graphic driver's uh, address in the uh, virtual memory. So this is very important for GPGPU. Without that, we couldn't do GPGPU. So now we can. We also support multiple threads, so multiple application per hardware context on the card, because Nouveau uses hardware context and I've been doing so for a while. So it means that when it crashed, uh, when it crashes, then the, the whole desktop crashes, basically. But, uh, but we gain a lot of performance out of it. So yeah, and security too. So the um, relocation mechanism has been re reworked. I didn't work on that, and I couldn't get information on what it meant. People forgot already. Um, some, a lot of users actually um, reported the no space error, so it means that TTM couldn't find uh, a space to put the buffer. Um, with this new API, uh, it, it reduces that uh, a lot. So now I don't think we have bug reports on that anymore. Possibly one or two, but it's better with cards. Yeah, when you have no memory, of course, you cannot have a very big... Basically, when people want to drive... Basically, when people want to drive something like uh, 1020p, roughly, resolution on TNT2, it just doesn't work. It doesn't have enough memory, so... Yeah. But, yeah, that's to be expected, and, of course, we can't do anything about this. Sorry about the noise. So, um, then... Since we rewrote libdrm, we needed to rewrite uh, MISA drivers. So it was a good thing, actually, because um, the uh, NVFX driver got rewritten. This was a mess. It, uh, it's the driver for GeForce 6 and 7? And 5, OK. So 5, 6, and 7, it used to be, uh, well, it used to run open uh, arena, and uh, that's about it. So um, Ben Skeggs worked a lot on that, and uh, he changed the name for NV30 to fit the... the hmm? Okay, so before that it was called NV30, then NVFX, and then back to NV30. I didn't know that. I'm too new. 
so yeah, now it works much better. It's not perfect, but it works much better. And the naming scheme is better because we are, have the NV50 and C0 drivers. So 30 just fits nicely compared to NVFX. Uh, okay, that's it. Video decoding was a big new feature uh, added by Martin Langhorst, which is not here, fortunately. Um, so he added the support for Fermi and Kepler. Well, I mean, it's the same thing, so basically the same thing, so it didn't have a lot to, uh, to, to do. But it, it used to rely on, uh, well, it relies a lot on uh, firmwares. So video decoding is done on the hardware, so you need to send the codecs to the card so as it can decode and, um, and push the everything on the screen. So these firmwares uh, are proprietary. We use the NVIDIA um, firmwares. And we used to ask user to extract these firmwares from a MMIO trace. And uh, MMIO trace is looking what uh, is going on on the PCI Express bus or what the driver is doing. So every interaction it has with the, the card, we can log it. And from that, we can recreate uh, the firmwares. So needless to say, it's a pain to, uh, to do that for end users. But the reasons why we didn't ship the, the firmwares was because it's, uh, well, we are not allowed to redistribute them, so legal problems. So to uh, overcome that, Ilya Mirkin actually wrote a, a script to extract the firmwares from the proprietary driver. So you just need to uh, download it, no need to install it, it will extract the, the firmwares from the, what we call the blob, and then uh, you can just use the firmwares. So it's very easy, on Arch Linux we have um, a package for that, it's very simple, it takes more well, the time of downloading and then uh, you have the firmwares, so it's very simple. I don't know for other distros. Gentoo has one in the pipes. Uh, and that's it, I think. Okay. Yeah, I don't know for Debian and uh, Ubuntu how they are going to, to do that, or Fedora, but I mean, yeah, we did our best. And we, as we don't have legal counsel and all that, or maybe we can just ask NVIDIA now if they want to allow us to redistribute their firmwares. Who knows? So, um, so Ilya helped on that, on this script. Where is it? Oh. But he also ported the support for, um, for NV50, so GeForce 8. So now we have uh, video decoding support for, from uh, GeForce 8 to uh, the latest cards. So that's full support, so um, for H264, uh, MPEG-1, 2, and uh, another one, with VC1. Yeah. Basically, every yeah. Basically, every hardware that supports full acceleration has it. I believe the... Uh, NV84 to uh, NV96, which has partial support yeah, for... It, it's there, PMPEG. Yeah. So, yeah, with PMPEG, you can get MPEG1 and 2 acceleration, and yeah. it's for NV40 to NV96, so G47, basically. Uh, so G47 can have uh, acceleration, but it, it, it's crap. MPEG2 acceleration uh, is not useful at all. <coughs> So if you want more information, uh, you can visit the um, wiki page, Video Acceleration. It's very up to date. So it will tell you what driver you need, so what, uh, what you need in the kernel side, MESA, and, uh, and the firmware, of course, and yes. what, what uh, the hardware actually supports. Okay, good. Uh, OpenGL, uh, a few days ago, I don't know if you saw the news, but we reached OpenGL 3.3 .3, uh, for NV50 and NVC0, so basically everything after GeForce 8. Uh, it's going to be in MISA 10.1. Uh, so the history a bit of uh, our support, basically we um, added OpenGL 3 support in MISA 8, so whenever the Intel driver uh, got it to work. Uh, and we got OpenGL 3.1 in MISA 9 apparently too, so um, uh, we can't remember if it was 9 or 9.1. So, uh, yeah, we don't we don't remember that. But basically, we've been uh, having a good track at uh, following the the releases uh, of Intel, but only for NVC zero. So this is very interesting because this one has NV uh, fifty and C zero at the same time. Usually, GeForce eight, no one cares about it. 
it, yeah, it's getting old. So we still have limited support for GK, so the, um, well, basically the, t the two latest uh, Kepler cards. And uh, yeah, I can't remember why. Uh, new, set maybe? Mm -hmm. new instruction set maybe? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I believe there is some subtle changes in schedule and a few others which hasn't been dealt with. And oh yeah, we can use this mic. <laughs> Forgot about it. So, uh, as I was saying, I believe there is a couple of changes in the ISA. I'm not There's too familiar. Oh, there's a new ISA which apparently we <laughs> haven't reverse added support. Yet? Yeah, reverse engineered or added support, so that's why it doesn't work. But I believe the primitives just it should work. It, just the more complex stuff, shaders. Yeah, that might take a while. Basically, you have your compositing environment, and that's it. <coughs> okay. Uh, one last thing. So the good thing with uh, Gallium, the Gallium infrastructure in Nuvo, is that there is a decorrelation between the drivers and uh, what we call the state trackers. So um, this uh, architecture allows us to create a, a new, uh, for instance, support for uh, OpenGL, and then all the drivers under uh, can re uh, add support for that, and uh, they don't need to rewrite everything themselves. So um, there have been a, a new state tracker, a Direct 3D uh, for DirectX 9 uh, state tracker. It was started by Joachim uh, Sinholt. I don't know this guy, but good, thank you. And uh, it was completed by Christopher Bemiller, so our main uh, developer of uh, Mesa. So uh, we managed to run Skyrim, Civilization 5, and uh, StarCraft 2, and we can get up to twice the the DFPS than Wine's uh, Direct 3D implementation. So when you do Direct 3D in the driver, it's way faster. Good. Yeah, apparently they got better, but uh, I mean Wine, but I don't know. So the announcement is here, and if you want to compile it, uh, well, you have the, the link. Uh, the README is, should be interesting. Uh, I haven't, I've never tried it, so I don't yeah. So now I hand the mic to. Just a brief one oh. on the compiling. If you want to compile the branch, it's uh, rather old. Mm. So this should be straightforward to, you know, to rebase. But if anyone is struggling, uh, most likely I'll, I'll put a note at the end. There was a guy that actually rebased it and he did sort out a, a couple of small glitches along the way. So. You'll see that one shortly. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about the tools for the Nuvo driver. Uh, I'm not developing the, the real driver, I'm just a tool de developer. We have a set of tools like um, register that database, MMIO trace decoder, um, assemblers and disassemblers for all the ISAs that NV NVIDIA uses, um, NVIDIA BIOS decoder, Something else. And yes, I'm taking care of the our package of tools, the NV tools that contains all that. There has been a lot of work on it recently. Uh, first and foremost, we moved to a new re repository. The NV tools was previously hosted on uh, on GitHub on Pathscale organization because. Well, they originally did a lot of work on it, but uh, it caused problems because not everybody had uh, push access to their uh, repo. We had to, we used some people forked their repo and had another repo at the SourceForge. I had an ad another private one. So rec we recently uh, cleaned that up. We have now a new repository on GitHub where every developer has admin rights. So it's much better that way. Uh, now, what are we doing in NVTools? Uh, first, uh, we're making documentation for the GPUs. The project started uh, two, two years ago, I think. It started as just plain text documentation of some bits of card that we know really well and might be interesting for uh, new programmers. It started with the Falcon ISA docs for one of the 
microcontrollers that drive, drive the card. Uh, we're slowly working to make it cover more, more of the card. And it's going quite well, but slow. Uh, but the plain text format turned out to be... Hmm. It was nice to write, but not that nice to read. So we recently moved to a new documentation system based on uh, the, Sphinx documentation, the Sphinx documentation system, the same one that Python docs use. It's, with Sphinx, you still write the documentation in plain text, but with a few special markup features. And Sphinx generates a, generates a nice cross-referenced uh, HTML from it, so you can easily browse it from your web browser. You can just go to that URL and have a look. And a new feature that Sphinx allows us, us to do is embedding uh, register references I right in the documentation. Uh, one of the features of NVTools has been always the register database. It's written ex in XML and it contains a list of every register we know on NVIDIA GPUs. It's used for several purposes. It's used to generate headers for the other drivers with the register addresses and values for them. It's used to, dec to decode NMIO traces, but our tool is used... It can also be used for standalone lookup purposes. The problem with that is that basically every register is, uh, is mentioned twice in the NVTools repo, once in the XML database and once in the documentation. So we are now adding uh, support for new special mar uh, markup to, to Sphinx so that we can just describe the register in the plain text documentation and it's going to generate the XML out of that. Uh, another uh, tool that was made for uh, Nuvo is the Falcon C compiler. The Falcon is a kind of micro microprocessor embedded in the NVIDIA GPU. It's used for many purposes, including uh, video decoding, including uh, graphics context switching, so we can run more than, application, more than one 3D application at once. Uh, it's used for power <coughs> management. So, uh, Shinpei Kato uh, made a C compiler for that, for that uh, ISA so that we can uh, write the microcode for Nuvo in C instead of doing it in assembly like now. It's yeah, because it's been, uh, you worked on the uh, assembly and disassembly of uh, this. So we just needed a compiler for that. Yeah. Uh, it's, right now it works only for the PGRAPH firmware, so only the context switching firmware, but with a bit of work it should be easily extendable to support PDMONS, uh, which is the power management uh, engine. And if you want to re read about it, here are some links. And huh, the most recent tool, the, the compiler, uh, basically, to learn how some uh, uh, microprocessors on the NVIDIA GPUs work, we have to look at the firmwares for that, them. Normally, we don't like to decompile things because it's, it's basically too hard. It's a lot of work to decompile something, and you can spend like weeks just tracing some functions, what calls what, what's the type of the structure, and it's going really, s it's really sl slow to figure out how the hardware works by the compilation. Uh, but it's, normally we use NMIO traces which just uh, listen on, on the communication between the driver and the card on the uh, PCI Express bus. But when uh, a piece of hardware is controlled by the microcontroller right on the card, you can just listen to what it's, what it's doing because there's no easy access to, to it. So we have to just take the firmware and decompile them to know what's going on. The process has been done by hand for a long time, but that's really inefficient. So uh, my master's thesis is 
uh, is at the compiler for the, that Falcon ISA. Um, it's meant to take care of the, all the repetitive uh, issues in decompiling uh, microcode. Right now it works it quite well for some pieces of microcode. It doesn't yet support the full uh, Falcon ISA, but it's enough to read the PGRAPH microcode. Uh, it also it's written in quite uh, arch architecture in independent way, so it can be extended to support any uh, ISA. Right now, it has support for most of most of Falcon and a VP VP2 macro ISA. That's used. For it's one of the many uh, controllers used in video decoding. I just picked it because it was the easiest ISA to get going. And. Well, the results are quite nice on of the, of the ISAs. You get uh, you give it a binary, uh, give it some hints where to start decoding, and it spits out uh, basically pseudo code that has normal control stru structures. It has variables, so it's much easier to read than the assembly code that we were used to. It's still still not public, it will be released soon when that my physics work is done. Right. Okay. Right, I uh, hope you can hear me. Um, as I said before, my name is Emil, and I'm going to talk a little bit on the community side. So I'm not sure how many of you are using Nuvo, how many of you are actually active or not. So I'm trying to be active, but you know, everyone has other obligations. So um, firstly, we're going to have a brief about the Bugzilla cleaning. So if you are aware, Nuvo used to be a user mode settings driver, which meant that everything was done in the DDX, which wasn't that great. So the bottom line is since we moved into the kernel, Nuvo has been a uh, KMS only driver. And if you look at the bugzilla, it had dozens and dozens of bugs about the EMS driver. And quite a lot of those weren't updated for years. So Ilya Merkin did a remarkable job which possibly some people hate him for because, oh, he closed my bug. I put so much effort into it five years ago. And then I stopped. I just didn't bother updating it. So what he did was he cleaned up a lot of the bugs. He basically did a mass closure of bugs, which hasn't been updated for over the last two years, three years. The bugs went down significantly, as you can see. Um, but there has been quite a few bugs I managed to get solved. People actually said, oh, yes, I am still having the problem. And with recent changes in kernel and everything, we can get a bit more information of, for example, where it's crashed and what kind of a problem it is. So yes, as I said, there have been quite a few fixes on that. Um, next thing is, um, not sure how many of you are familiar Free desktop has moved their wiki system, yay! And um, actually, it's a good thing because uh, there was more than enough spam. And while doing that, there has been more than dozens of obsolete wiki articles, and some were not that out of updated. So what Ilya and Martin over there did was basically they nuke most of the obsolete ones, and they rewrote the the cover pages, the Bugzilla page, and that one worked out very nicely. At the moment, as you just go to the wiki, you just get a nice big picture and you see, okay, what do I look for? Click on bugs and we make sure we update the so-called uh, latest version of the software because as you can see, there aren't that many of us. Um, it's not that easy to always uh, keep on going and backporting for, for example, for. Means a nine point something where basically there's two people actually doing some work on it. 
So we always recommend you try that, the latest software. Um, so as I said, we clean up a lot of the craft. There's still some in there, I believe, but if anyone's keen on doing it, more than welcome to just pop into our IRC, say, oh, I noticed this page, I want to help. Great. Uh, they, they will need rights for that. But so <coughs> that's the problem with the new wiki system. We need an, you need an account, uh, a free desktop uh, account. Uh, so yeah, so you can. Need you need to ask for the rights. It's not a free desktop account, as in a uh, SSH account, but still. Um, yeah, that's what I said. Basically, come to the IRC channel and tell us, okay, and basically we'll work something out. If I'm yeah. not sure what the procedure at the moment is, but it should be almost straightforward to have a setup and working if you really want to help. Um, please do. Yes, please do, because there's a lot of stuff in there. And, and not just wiki, there's a lot of stuff almost everywhere. Well, you, you can get free wood if you, if you have a... If you have an SSA ac account, you can get free wood when, if using the password to generate it for the wiki. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty silly. I'm not doing any, any of that administration, so I'm not commenting. Um, you just avoid the path. I'm not doing um, administration. Um, okay, so you definitely have heard some of these stuff. Uh, so at XDC 2013, they released some non-disclosure documentation, which meant great for us. Um, additionally, there was a, obviously an email from NVIDIA which clearly stated, well, we want to improve the out-of-box experience for Nouveau users, which is, again, great. Um, I believe we had one significant piece of documentation which did cover a couple of buggy areas in Nouveau. Possibly, there's still a couple more areas which Nuvo needs to extend because of the variety of various connectors, you see, especially docking versus non-docking setups, etc. This is what the DCB-related VBO stables means, display connector blocks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, additionally, one of the Nuvo guys noticed that MSI weren't working that greatly. So in NVIDIA were kind enough to provide us with some I information as to which specific chipsets needed to get what, shall we say, methods to avoid any issues we were having at that point. And additionally, a very, very nice help in terms of video recording because Ilya Merkin, as he was working, I believe, on the... Yeah, VP2 and VP3, it was hap at the first few seconds of rendering and decoding, the, the decoding was great. Just say it was crashing in two seconds. And yeah, so great, that one got fixed, perfect. Um, like more than happy, despite that I don't have such a card, but at least you can use it. Um, what's next? Oh yes, so we're talking about Tegra land. Um, it's good because we did not notice a few registers, as Martin mentioned earlier, which for me doesn't ring a bell because I haven't looked it. And uh, yeah, at least for power management, uh, they have um, many of the registers are the same. It's uh, the Tigra K1 is based on a, a Kepler card. Yeah, for graphics, uh, but still some engines are very similar or exactly the same. We don't know yet. Mostly a mix of both. Um, and then, um, so we have the register dumps, so it means the addresses, their name. So the name may be cryptic, but usually it gives you an idea of what this is. And then the, the, the values that should be stored in them, uh, the default value or what means every part of the bit field. So it's very, very nice, uh, especially for stuff that you cannot really reverse engineer, uh, engineer easily, such as the hardware model for the power consumption of the card. I wouldn't know that at one point this is just for the graphic 2D engine and this is for the 3D engine and all part of it. So 
now we can have a proper documentation of, on that, which is nice. Um, yeah. Okay. And uh, additionally, I believe it was yesterday morning, I thought I was still sleeping when I saw an RSC patch set, which is great. It, I believe, provides so just some main, uh, very small architectural work on Nouveau, such as that su provides support for non PCI devices. It basically has, I believe, uh, a very basic support for the Tegra K1 device. And if I'm not mistaken, so don't quote me on that, it doesn't provide any mode settings, so... There it should no work. There is no display engine mm. on the... Oh, okay. Mm. So, okay, so if so it doesn't cover the... Rendering. Yeah, so... And so so yeah, basically now you can uh, use Nuvo to work uh, to as a DRM driver for the Tigra K1. Uh, they won't work on the user space, so to the N3D acceleration. But if it's really based on Kepler, it should pretty much work out of the box with our drivers. So we'll see because we don't have the hardware yet. But this would be something very interesting, right? Yeah, definitely. And as I said earlier, if Genuinely, if anyone's willing to help, or if it's got a few moments, or if, for example, if you're lurking in Nuvo channel and you see someone coming up with a trivia question, just please help out because there aren't that many of us. I, I said it for like four times now, and it would be great if people just come forward and say, oh, for example, I'm very good at programming in C, or for example, I love writing documentation. For example, he can help out Martin with Hey, people like... We are really looking for, uh, to find uh, someone in interested in compilers because we suck at it right now. Oh, yes. And, yeah, we need people for that. And, uh, yeah. But in Please. general, whoever mm -hmm. is willing to help, just come forward either in the IRC channel or send an email of either one of us. should be rather straightforward to find. If not, just give us a shout and we'll get you sorted. And maybe we can give our nicknames on the IRC. Oh yeah, mine is funny. So is Zegzagzo, uh, yeah. is MWK, I'm you poof, and ML Uncost. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, basically that's it. Uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions. I just turned up. Uh, who's working on it on the NVIDIA side? Okay, Other. You're being hyped. Huh? No, no. From the. Com com oh, who, who's working for NVIDIA working on it? I think you misunderstood. NVIDIA now is starting working and improving Nuvo. Yeah. yeah. So there are. NVIDIA uh, engineers, uh, we don't know uh, them yet. Oh, you don't know them yet. Okay, that's yeah, the answer to my question. But yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe we've been clear enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> And uh, this documentation that they released in 2013, uh, how much would you say that uh, it covers? I mean, uh, that one person <laughs> of the VBIOS? <laughs> no, they, they explain the VBIOS, the video BIOS, which basically describes how the hardware is laid out and if it has support for like, does it have an external display connector or not? Or is it a special media box or something like that? And it's really helpful because. A lot of those configurations we wouldn't see in the wild, so we can add support for something we don't necessarily have ourselves. Anybody else?
And does the document documentation on the BIOS also cover old hardware or only rather recent hardware? Basically, when they release a new BIOS, they add support for they add support next to the old stuff they have. So they explain new stuff, but from that we can work out the old stuff as well in some cases. Like some connectors were already in use in old cars, and we saw them, but we didn't know where they were necessarily. So now we know what they are, and we can add support for the old stuff as well. Okay. Uh, so when I run the in the wall driver, is there a chance that my graphics card may break, or are there, at least in theory, enough safeguards? Uh, no, it it could self-destroy, but. Yeah, uh, don't yeah. But I never managed to, and I've been heating my uh, my cards with um, uh, oh, what's the word for that? Hair dryer. Uh, in order for it to uh, for it to reach 130 degrees to test some, uh, well, I didn't know how it worked at the time, but there is a, a dedicated part of, uh, of the engine working on thermal management. And I knew there were thresholds and all that for temperature, and I wanted to check in the VBIOS where the, was the temperature written and in the hardware. So I had to do stuff like that and test everything. And yes, I reached uh, even more than that. <laughs> and the card never, I mean, it still works perfectly. So yeah. And he's been stupid enough to do that on uh, a Fermi, and uh, it's still working. I mean, running at ga yeah, running games at 130 degrees. He no, does it that. Was it, it was just desktop compositing, but still. What? <laughs> okay, weird. Uh, yeah, so it could in theory happen, but it's unlikely. I've been torturing cars for a lot of time, and no, none of them broke. So. Basically, uh, I believe uh, Martin here has second to Nvidia, the biggest collection of their cards. If you go to his page, you're going to be just shocked by, by the vast amount. I think you're missing 10 overall, or a little bit short of that. Something like that. Uh, 15, I think. I've, I've run uh, long loops that wrote oh. random values to all their registers on cards, and none of them broke. <laughs> so it seems rather hard to destroy a card in software. Well, in some cases I did manage to break it, but then if I turned the power off and then waited for like 30 seconds for it to finally stop getting any power, then it would work again. So, yeah, it, it's very hard, but if it breaks, you get to, get bo you get to keep both pieces. <laughs> Anybody else? And okay, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>